Today, the Holy Spirit laid it in my heart to speak to us about the benefits and importance of midnight prayers. I mean, praying between the hours of 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. This is a deep secret that the devil doesn't like believers to know. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer is our ammunition for spiritual warfare, and it is a must-have for every child of God that has determined to win battles of life. God answers our prayers at all time, but because midnight is a period of much spiritual activity, Christians must be active participants in the spiritual realm. Praying at midnight has great effects on the operations of the dark kingdom. Every night activity of satanic kingdom against you this season will come to nothing in Jesus' name. Amen. The reason why it is very important to pray in the midnight is because, midnight is always a period of intense spiritual activities both by the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. If you must control activities around you and dismantle satanic ordinances in your life, then you must learn to wake up at midnight to fight against the powers of darkness. Midnight is the time to confront every storm of destruction and distraction that is robbing you of God's blessings and provisions on your life. Also, it is the time to speak peace and calm into every situation of turbulence and confusion. Reduce your sleep. As the enemies meet to determine your fate, you go on your kneel and determine theirs, scatter their meeting and strip them powerless. Real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real men of power, contact power when men sle. If you are facing any kind of challenges, be it financial challenges, health challenges, spiritual challenges or whatever the case may be, midnight is a good time to pray your way out of these problems. God is a miraculous God, he performs wonders, and he will answer all your prayer requests in Jesus' name. Amen. Start praying at midnights, and I can assure you that you will testify to God's wonders. Please subscribe to this channel. Midnight prayers transformed my life. I got the job I desire and got married six months after. It didn't end there. God blessed me with twin boys. To God be the glory. Engage in midnight prayers. I have been seeking admission for some times now with no luck. In less than a month of committing myself to midnight prayers, I gained admission into a prestigious university. Suddenly, school started offering me admission. My relationship with God has reached another level. I stand in awe of my God, who revived me and restored me. I just wanted to encourage everyone to do midnight prayers as this breaks all curse from your life. I have been praying for almost four months now and I have seen a lot of difference in my life. I have grown spiritually and I have seen God has removed all negative people from my life. Are you wondering what to pray about when you wake up to pray at night? First of all, pray and thank God for the power in the name of Jesus to undo all that the devil has done, in Jesus' name. Read Luke 10 verse 19. Pray and declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, in the name of Jesus Christ. Read Isaiah 54 verse 17. Pray and ask God to send his warrior angels into the camp of the enemy to rout and destroy their plans, in Jesus' name. Read 2 Kings 19 verse 35. Pray and take back everything Satan has stolen from you through dreams all these years. Declare that you have double for all your loss, in Jesus' name. Read Isaiah 61 verse 7. Pray and plead the blood of Jesus for your deliverance and freedom from every torture, captivity and oppression from evil spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ. Read Zechariah 9 verse 12. Pray and declare that henceforth, you are unstoppable, you are moving forward, you are taking territories and making real tangible progress even in the midst of satanic opposition, in the name of Jesus Christ. As you continue in prayer, the Holy Spirit will take over and begin to give specific prayer points that are peculiar to you and your case. And when he does, please don't ignore the signals, don't ignore the prompting, just yield and pray as he leads. Prayers born by the Holy Spirit are the most important and direct prayer points that will sufficiently meet your need. Hey baby, how are you doing? Wow, Debbie my dear, I am fine, what are you doing here? I came here to relax, I recently relocated to this town. That's nice, and how is your family? I am not married yet, I can't love any man like I love you. You know that. But I am a married man now, in fact I am blessed with two children. You also need to move on with your life. 
I can't move on without you, you know you are already part of my life, and the fact that you are married doesn't change the way I feel about you. You know what, I have to leave now, we will talk some other time. It's okay, we will see later, take care of yourself. Debbie, who was that man that you spoke with at the restaurant? Tell me something my friend, what is going on? Because the last time I checked, you didn't have time for any man. Ha 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 I knew you would ask me about him. You are right about what you said that I don't have time for men. You see that man that you saw me with? He is my ex. He is the reason I came into this town and the more reason why I don't allow men come close to me. But why? Is he the only man you love? Or why would you relocate because of a man? Don't worry about that. You will know- I'm so surprised to see Debbie today. I hope her presence in this town won't cause problem for me. Setting my eyes on her alone seems to have awakened my feelings for her. How will I cope with her presence in my family? God please, help me to overcome this temptation. Mike has the guts to tell me that he is married and that I should move on with my life. Who will want to be with a girl who has no womb and can no longer give birth? What Mike doesn't know is that I am now on a mission to break his family and destroy his life. And I will do anything to achieve that. By the time I'm done with him, he will regret ever knowing me. Good day wise one. You are welcome my daughter. What can I do for you? Wise one, there is a man that we used to love each other, suddenly a woman took him away from me. I want my man back, I need a charm that will make him fall in love with me again. If you can do this for me, I will be very grateful. I don't care how much it will cost me. My daughter, I understand how you feel. I will help you and it will cost you just a little amount of money. You don't have to pay now, you can pay later once you have achieved your goal. Alright, thank you wise one. I will give you a powder that you will apply on your face once you set out to see your man. He will fall in love with you and obey all your commands as soon as he sets his eyes on you. Wow, thank you wise one. If the charm performs just as you have said, then it would be doing for me more than I asked. And this will make make me eternally grateful to you. Alright my daughter, just do as I have instructed with the powder. Victor, you won't believe Debbie has just relocated to this town. That's serious? How did you know? I bumped into her yesterday, she was so happy so see me, she told me she isn't married yet. And even though I advised her to move on with her life, I have been thinking about her since then. My guy? Don't tell me that you have started loving your ex again after just an encounter with her. Don't forget you now have a family, if you decide to get back with Debbie. You have a whole lot to lose and Debbie has nothing to lose. You are right, it's not like I also want to keep in extramarital affairs, I don't want to hurt my wife, she has done nothing to deserve it. So what do you want to do now? Because you can't avoid Debbie for long, since she now lives in town. I think I will just honor her invitation once, I will make her understand how much I love my family and that as a Christian, it is wrong for me to keep extramarital affairs. Better, I hope she will understand. She has no choice, she's been begging me to pay her a visit, I will go and make my points known to her. That would be good for both of you, I wish you best of your luck. Thank you. I'm so happy right now, Mike has finally agreed to pay me a visit. He has no idea about what is in stock for him. Just an eye contact with him and he would become mine. All thanks to the wise one. And cheers to our new beginning. You are welcome Mike. Thank you. Please coming and have your seat. Please show some love by subscribing to this channel. Please show some love by subscribing to this channel. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. You know how much I love you. I came all the way to this town just to be with you. I know you are married, but that doesn't stop us from being together. I love you too baby. And I will do anything to make you happy. Alright, you don't need to do much. Just follow me now and make love to me. Then you will become mine forever. I will be right behind you. Your wish is my command. Welcome home dear. Thank you. You didn't come home to sleep last night. I called your number severally but you didn't pick my call. Hope all is well. All is well. I was busy at that time. And what makes you think you can question me? This is my house and I can come in and go out at any time. I am sorry dear. I was only worried about you. Worry for yourself. Food is ready. Should I serve you? I am not interested in eating your food. And please, let me be. What is wrong with my husband? He has changed all of a sudden. Something is wrong somewhere. Dear Lord, please be with my husband. Please solve whatever challenge that is making my husband to behave this way towards me.
Nuella, I don't understand the ways of my husband any longer, he no longer eats my food or even sleep in the house. Did you have a quarrel with him? Not at all, he recently started complaining about almost everything I do in the house, which is very strange. I honestly can't just say that I am suspecting my husband. But his behavior this day seems to me like he now keeps extramarital affairs. Don't go that far my friend, don't be too fast to conclude, it's not good for your marriage. I suggest you talk to him about it, you might just be overthinking things. I've tried on several occasions, but I ended up apologizing for doing that, he blames me for everything that goes wrong in our marriage. I don't even know what to do again. You can pray, whatever the case may be with your husband, prayers can, and will solve it. Remember what is good needs prayer. So also what is about to be good. Okay, I will continue to pray. I pray God ministers to him. Amen. Let's quickly go to the market, so that you can return home as soon as possible. Alright, thank you. It's been days of having fun with Mike, I enjoy his company and cooperation. Now it's time to take the next action. I will not stop until I have completely destroyed his life. Sweetheart. Yes baby. You said you love me and you will do whatever makes me happy. Yes, just name it. Okay, I want you to send your wife and children out of your house, I want to pack into your house. If it would make you happy, then consider it done. Thank you baby. I want them out in three days. So go home now and send them away. Okay, bye. I want you and your children out of my house immediately. My dear, what are you talking about? What is our offense? You don't have to commit an offense before I do what pleases me in my house. But if you must know why, then I will tell you. My sweetheart wants to pack into the house and she wants you all out. Am I not your sweetheart? Are you having an affair with someone else? I have told you what I want, and you must abide by it. It's okay, but please give me just two days to sort things out. I will pack out after two days. Let it not exceed two days, if not, I will throw your things out myself. Thank you. So my husband has been cheating on me with another woman, with the way he has been behaving, I'm sure he is under a spell. This is the time to pray more seriously so that Satan will not take over my home. I asked for two days just to buy myself more time for my husband to be delivered from the spell of an evil woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I bind all principalities, powers of darkness and wickedness in high places. I bind and break witchcraft, mind-binding spirits of destruction that wants to take over my home in Jesus' name. I bind and break every power of lust, perversion, intimidation, rebellion, rejection, anger, hatred, wrath and rage, resentment and bitterness in Jesus' name. I destroy every spirit of Jezebel, hypnosis and compulsive behavior in my husband in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you Lord for answering my prayer, for on Jesus' mighty name O oh, have prayed. Amen. Why do I feel this way? I feel as if something went out of my body. Three days later. Today is the fourth day since my husband asked me to pack out of the house with the children. He is no longer saying anything about it again. In fact if I have to be sincere, everything has returned back to normal. That means my suspicion about him being under a spell was accurate. Thank you Jesus for delivering my husband. I will confront him about it to be sure of relaxing. My dear, won't you be going out today? No. I want to spend time with the children. I haven't spent time with them for a while now. That would be nice. But dear, did you change your mind about sending me packing with the kids? Send you packing? What do you mean? How can I even say such to you? You said so. You said it was your sweetheart that gave you the order. I'm so sorry dear for whatever I might have said. I must have said those things under the influence of something. It's fine dear. I'm glad we are back together now. Good day wise man. How are you and what brought you here? Today is the seventh day since I commanded my man with the charm that you gave to me. Did you use it as instructed? Yes wise one, it was working perfectly until recently. That means he has had an encounter with a stronger force. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do for you. Please do something, I have not exerted my revenge on him. I'm so sorry. The wise one has disappointed me, but I cannot accept defeat like that. I am going straight to Mike's house now, I will use our secret as a weapon. Once his wife finds out the truth about me, I'm sure she will leave him for good. I didn't come all the way to fail in my mission. Debbie, what are you doing here? And how did you know my house? Stop talking nonsense. How dare you refuse me of my request? 
I gave you three days to send your wife and children packing, today is the seventh day and you haven't. How can I send them packing? It's not right, see, I am sorry if I promised you that, but trust me, I wasn't in the right frame of mind, I wouldn't have promised such on a normal circumstance. Why shouldn't you send them packing, you don't deserve a happy home, so you now love your wife and children after you turned me to a barren woman. You lie, I won't let you have a peaceful home, you have to do as I have said. How and when did I turn you into a barren woman? I discovered that I was pregnant for you after you graduated and left the university. I tried to reach you by all means but it was all to no avail. So I went for an abortion so as not to bring shame to myself and to my family. But unfortunately, my womb was affected in the process. And ever since then, no man has agreed to marry me. Do you now see how you destroyed my life? I am so sorry, I wasn't aware of all these. After graduation, I lost my phone, so there was no way I could reach you. By the time I got another phone, I tried to reach you, but you lying was always unavailable. So I thought the relationship was not meant to be. I didn't know you were passing through a lot. Please forgive me. I will not, you better do as I have said if you don't want your wife to know about all this. But I have heard everything already. And I am sorry to disappoint you. Your story is very pathetic but it is not enough to break my home. You were the one who placed my husband under a spell and even made an attempt to send me out of my home. Did you not see that you have failed? You still have TGE guts to come into my home to threaten my husband. Keep quiet, did you not hear all that I said your husband did to me? Put yourself in my shoes before you utter nonsense. Why didn't you leave everything to God? Why do you want his innocent wife and children to suffer? What do you stand to gain if you succeed in breaking his home? I can't stand this nonsense any longer. I am out of here. But be sure I won't relent until I succeed in destroying your husband. I'm sorry my dear, please forgive me. I have forgiven you. God has fought our battle for us. But we have to pray more, so that spells won't have an effect on you again. Okay my dear. Thanks for watching. Mom, I am tired. For crying out loud, I am 28 years old and no one has ever asked me out. Am I not beautiful enough? My princess, you are one of the most beautiful lady I have met on earth. I believe one day you will be free from all those nightmares and get married. Well, I was strolling around the neighborhood yesterday then I sighted an inscription that reads, Christ the Living Rock Church. I will be going there later to see the pastor, he may have a solution to my problem. I am not in support of that, if you need to see a pastor, I will take you to one. It's alright mom, I have to go and see the pastor of that church, I don't know why my mom doesn't want me to go. She wants to take me to see a pastor again, and ever since she has been taking me to see them, I haven't been delivered from my predicament. I have to go against her will this time, it's going to be my own effort to get out of this problem that I am into. Esther goes to see the pastor of Christ the Living Rock Church. Good day sir. Good day young lady, please sit down. Thank you sir. How may I help you? Pastor, please deliver me, I need deliverance. Okay, tell me about yourself. My name is Esther, I am a university graduate, my mother is a popular business tycoon. Growing up, I was not the type that lacks anything, but my life was not complete because I didn't have anyone to call my sibling. It baffles me sometimes why no one has ever asked me out growing up. I clocked 28 and it became a very big burden to me. Throughout my university days, no guy asked me out. I tried using money to make them like me but it all proved abortive. The very day I clocked 18 was the beginning of my problem, I started having nightmares of an old man always telling me that he was my husband. My mom has taken me to many prayer houses but the nightmares continued. Do you know your father? No sir, I grew up with only my mom. Even though I have asked her on several occasions where my father is, she would always change the topic whenever I brinked it up. Your father got married to your mother as a poor man, everything was going on well until your father decided to come out from the shackles of poverty. So he decided to visit AAAA. The pastor fell unconscious, then woke up after 30 minutes looking very weak. What happened, pastor? They are here. Who is they? I can't tell you what my eyes saw, in fact, Stand up and get out of my office, I don't want to see you anywhere close to this church again. Please subscribe to this channel. I can't comprehend the pastor's sudden change of mood, I had to leave his office quickly to avoid drama. He didn't finish what he was saying about my father. Could my father be the cause of my problem? My mom is calling. Hello mom, 
Hello Esther, where are you? I am somewhere around Christ the Living Rock Church. What are you doing there? I came to check a friend. I want you to come back home now. Alright Ma, I'm on my way. Only God knows why my mom wants me to come home immediately. Esther had an accident and was taken to the hospital by Pastor James. How are you feeling? Weak. Where am I? What am I doing here? And who brought me here? It's all right, you will be fine. You had an accident few hours ago, the man that hit you with his car rushed you here for treatment after the accident. Let me inform him that you are awake. Pastor James, the lady you brought has woken up. You can now go and see her. Thank you so much doctor. I hope everything is okay with her. Yes, Pastor James, go in now, and see her. Young lady, how are you feeling? Please I'm sorry for what happened. Sir, you don't need to be sorry. It was actually my fault, I was lost in thought. Lost in thought, what were you thinking about? I am afraid of explaining what I am passing through to you because of what happened to the previous pastor. Feel free to talk to me, I am a pastor. And I might be of help. I was on my way back from a church when I had the accident. The pastor sent me out of his office after he was spiritually attacked, I had gone there to seek a solution to my constant nightmares and lack of suitors. I know at this point of life, many negative thoughts will be running through your head, like suicide but please don't fall a victim of it. Just believe that with God, everything is possible. I will fight this battle with you to the end. Thank you sir. Let me go to the doctor's office, so that I can settle the hospital bills. Alright sir. My princess how are you doing? Mom, I am fine now, just that I am having a slight headache and feeling weak also. You will be alright, I saw the pastor that brought you here, I've known him for so many years now, feel free around him. I will be going to a business trip that will take me two days. Alright, safe trip mom. Let me go to the doctor's office, Pastor James was on his way there when first saw him the other time. Alright mom. Esther, the doctor said you will be discharged now, I will drive you home. Your mom said she would be going on a business trip and has to leave immediately. Yes, she told me about it. Thanks for taking care of me sir. Thank God. Esther, it will be my pleasure if you visit me at my place tomorrow, so that we can pray over your problem. Sir, why you're home? Can't I meet you at church? Look, I came here for a crusade and I will be leaving for my place very soon. Okay sir. You can call me tomorrow when you are ready to come. I will direct you to my apartment. Alright, thank you sir. I think I will visit this man tomorrow, he might have a solution to my problems, I have prayed and fasted for many years but still nothing changed. Esther had a dream that night, a man appeared in her dream warning her not to visit Pastor James. I think the man in my dream was only trying to stop me from going to where I will get the solution to my problem. Which means the pastor have the solution to my problem. I have to go see him immediately, delay is dangerous. Good day Pastor James and thanks for yesterday. It's nothing, hope you didn't find it difficult to locate this place. No sir, I'm familiar with this area, it was very easy for me. Alright, let's sit down. What should I offer you? Nothing sir, I'm okay. Alright, let's get down to business. The only way I can fight this battle with you is for you to allow me get intimate with you. You are not a child, let's just do this. Even though I am desperate for a solution, I can't grant you access to my body. I promised myself to keep my virginity as a gift to my future husband. I thought you were a man of God. I am a man of God, but my body is not a firewood. I can't do that sir. Then I will have to force you. Leave me alone. Yay, yay 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 yay. What is happening to me? In an attempt to force Esther, Pastor James started shaking and within some minutes he fell down unconscious. What just happened to Pastor James, an attack, again? Well, thank God I was able to escape his attempt. I wish I had listened to the warnings of that man in my dream. All these would have been avoided. May God deliver us from these so-called men of God, who do nothing but destroys people's life. I need to enter a restaurant and cool off a bit before heading home. Sister please can you give me some seconds I want to have a word with you. 
What do you want from me? I noticed you have been following me since. Are you a beggar that needs money? I have the solution to your problem. Who are you and how did you know I have a problem? I am the servant of the Most High God. Okay sir, I'm sorry if I overreacted. I understand how you feel now, the Holy Spirit has already revealed everything that you are going through to me. And I believe if you have faith, the solution to your problem is not far from here. There are some hidden secrets that you are yet to know. Please sit down sir. I know what happened to the man of God that wanted to set you free the last time, but he that is in me, is greater than he that is in the world. Your father married your mother in poverty, hoping that a miracle will happen that will change their story. After some times, your mom suggested they visit a native doctor for money ritual. At first, your father kicked against the idea, but your mom threatened to leave the marriage, so he succumbed to your mom's idea and they went for ritual. You were only three years old by then. The ritual was successful and they became rich, it was time for renewing the money and they were given two options. It was either they bring an infant baby for sacrifice or you will be married to the demon of wealth that gave them their wealth. Unfortunately, it was only your mother that went to the shrine that day, she refused to involve herself with a human blood, she then decided that the best option was to get you married to the demon of wealth. Who is this demon of wealth? His name is Mammon, he is a powerful fallen angel that is associated with unclean wealth. He is a false god of excessive materialism, lust for wealth and unholy richness. He is the demon of greed. Has he been the one attacking anyone that tries to touch or deliver me from his bondage? Yes, getting you separated from him is a battle that needs to be fought seriously with prayer, fasting and the word of God. Okay sir, so my parents did this to me just so that they can become wealthy. While all these things were going on, your father wasn't aware. When he heard what your mother has done, he was angry he threatened your mom to expose everything to the world. Your mom became afraid of getting exposed, then went back to the native doctor, then a spell was casted on your dad. So that he would remain silent for life. My mom is behind everything and she has been claiming to be innocent. So where is my dad now? I can't tell you where he is now but with time you will know. My mom is calling me. Okay, pick the call. Please subscribe to this channel. Esther, where are you? I want you to start coming home now, there is a serious problem at home. Okay ma, my mom said I should come home, that there is a serious problem. This was the same woman that told me she will be spending two days on a business trip. Things are now making sense to me. I will go home now and make trouble with her. She has done more than enough in my life already. Please don't go home now. Why don't you want me to go home now? The Bible says in the Ephesians 6:12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I know what the enemies has already planned against you, please don't go anywhere. How did you know all these things? The Holy Spirit is the one revealing all these things to me. Your mother has indulged herself in many secret cult and confraternity that is why she she is known all over the state. There is a calabash in your mom's room, that is where all her power belongs. If we succeed in getting that calabash everything is finished. I can get the calabash for you. It is not going to be as easy as you think. But I will go with you to the house. Lodge in a nearby hotel, we would meet here tomorrow so that you will take me to your house. Okay, thanks for your help sir. Esther, why have you refused to pick my call since yesterday? And who is this man that you brought in? Oh, you again, what are you doing in my house? Mom, what is going on? Have you met this man before? Get him out of my house right now. Esther, you will be delivered in the next few minutes. I know the battle that awaits us, please don't be afraid. The name of Jesus is above every other name. Don't forget to call him when the enemies launch an attack on you. Go into your mother's room now. Look for the calabash and break it as soon as you find it. Okay, sir. This man I will urge you to back off in this battle or you live to regret the rest of your life. I know what this lady has passed through for the past 25 years. I am here to deliver her and not even you can stop me. Because he who is in me, is greater than he, who is in the world. You have decided to poke your nose into what doesn't concern you and I know very well that it would send you to your grave. The Bible says in Romans 8:37 that, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I command thunder from heaven to destroy your evil powers now. Esther found and broke the calabash in her mother's room. This got her mom very furious.
You are fighting a battle that isn't yours. Aster has been dedicated to the demon of wealth. You are biting more than you can chew. Aster has been a slave to my wealth. You can set her free from bondage. The Bible says in TBE Book of John 8:36 that if the Son of Man set you free, you will be free indeed. Esther has already been set free from your bondage. I want you to go inside and pick any valuable things. We have to leave here immediately. Thank you, man of God. You are a true servant of the Most High God. I feel inner peace. I have a feelings that I am now totally free. You are free indeed, all thanks to God who fought the battle himself. Just make sure you never stop praying as from now. Okay, sir. I know I have offended you. I have been the one behind everything that has been happening to you. The prayer house we all went to belongs to members of our confraternity, that's why they couldn't told you the truth. Please find a place in your heart to forgive me. I don't have anything to say to you, how can a mother do these terrible things to her own child? God will judge you. I will leave now. Thank you so much sir, you are a God sent. Words cannot express how grateful I am to you. All glory belongs to God. Hello, is that Esther on the phone? Yes, who am I unto? My name is Joseph, and I am the bank manager of Fidelity Investments Bank. I have been seeing you around for some times now, and I must confess, you are my dream woman. I want to take you out on a date tomorrow, will you be available? Sure, it would be a pleasure. Thank you, I will text you the address of the restaurant right away, it's not too far from your area. I don't mind picking you up tomorrow also. All right, thank you. I will send you the address of where I am too. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, bye for now. Truly, there is nothing God cannot do. I will never stop praying as from now on, I will get closer to God who can conquer all battle for me. Esther got wedded six months later. She reunited with her father and also forgave her mom on her wedding day. Dear Lord, I don't like the way I am struggling. I can't afford anything on my own, and I work tirelessly. I have been praying for a breakthrough, but nothing seems to change, I don't know what to do. Please don't let me die in poverty. Welcome Francis, you look worried, is anything the matter? I am tired of my life, nothing seems to be working for me. I am frustrated, it's as if God has forgotten me. I work even more than our mates that are successful, I go to church, I fast and pray almost all the time, but things refuse to change for good. As it is now, I am willing to do anything to make money and become rich, I can't take it anymore. Our cases are similar, I am always complaining, I can't feed my family a three square meal, my children are always crying of hunger, I am tired of seeing them suffer, but what do we do? Yours is even better, at least, you have a family. All my mates are married, some has given birth, many has cars and houses, and many other good things that I desire, but I have none. I think God has forsaken me. It's okay now, Francis, don't let us sin against God through our speech, let us continue to pray and keep our hope alive. I believe he will bless us one day. I pray so. What of your wife? She's fine, she went for the women fellowship program, she should be back anytime soon. Okay, I will leave now, my regards to her. All right, welcome dear, how was the program? We bless God, I thought you would be going out. Yes, I was supposed to. Francis came in as I was about leaving the house. Okay, how is he doing? He's fine, just that he seems to be giving up on himself, he feels he hasn't achieved any good thing in life. But we should be grateful for life and health, many people has wealth but they are on the sick bed, many that were rich are in the mortuary. So if we are alive and healthy, we should be thanking God and not complaining. If there is life, there is hope. You are right dear, may God forgive me because I was also complaining instead of encouraging Francis. Thank you for awakening my hope again. I believe very soon, our situation will change. Yes my dear, God's time is the best, may his will for us be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord I thank you for your provision, riches or no riches, Lord, I will always remember you. All power and glory come from you alone. Thank you for blessing me, just as was promised in the Bible. All my hope is in you. Honey. I'm done packing the food's items, they are all in the car now. Alright, we should leave quickly, so that we can reach at least five orphanage homes today. Alright, but I want to ask you a question. Please dear, ask me when we are in the car, I don't want us to delay any further. Alright, it's okay. Thank you dear. Honey, what question do you want to ask me? Okay, I know it is good to reach out to and bless the non-privileges, 
but you take it as a necessity, you do it as if your life depends on it, is there more to it than I know of? Yes my dear, it is a necessity to me, do you believe that all I have has been given to me by God? Yes, my dear. Good, it is the same God that gave me all the riches that also says in the book of Luke 6:38, Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over, and poured into your lap. God also gave us an instruction in Deuteronomy 16:17, All must give as they are able, according to the blessings given to them by the Lord your God. That is why it is compulsory for me to give as much as I can. In doing this, I am obeying my God, the giver of my riches. This has been my policy, and that is why, I can never lack. Wonderful, if only all the children of God knows the importance of giving, then, no one will lack. Yes my dear, the reward of giving is receiving. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, thank you. Francis and Ezekiel discusses as they await cab at the bus stop. Ezekiel, have you noticed Richard lately? Yes Francis. God has really blessed him, he now comfortably handles projects in the church alone, he gives to the needy and even blesses anyone who goes to him for financial assistance. I pray God blesses us too so that we can bless others. Amen, but I am seeing things from a different perspective, I'm thinking those riches are not from God. We serve God the same way, the only thing we don't do is giving, and that's because we don't have. What are you driving at? I think he does money rituals, he lavishes money too much, he is not even as hard working as we are, so where is he possibly getting all that money from? God can also bless someone as much as that, there is nothing our God cannot do. I wouldn't want us to sin against God concerning this matter, I believe our own time will come, when we would have in abundance. I know God can bless a man that much, but why hasn't he blessed us with that kind of riches? He is not more righteous than we are. As for me, I have made up my mind to pay Richard a visit, I will ask him the secret of his wealth, and I am willing to do whatever he says to become rich like him, even if it's money rituals, I'm tired of suffering. I can't believe you are saying all these things, have you forgotten God's warnings to us about money in the book of 1 Timothy 6 10-11, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people, craving money, have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, are a man of God, so run from all these evil things. Pursue righteousness in a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Don't allow the love of money to cause you to sin against God. That is my advice for you. Thanks for your advice, but I will still go and see Richard, I will let you know whatever he says. Alright, good luck. Francis goes to see Richard. Please subscribe to this channel. Welcome Francis, what should I offer you? Don't worry, Richard, I am okay for now. I have come to have a serious discussion with you. Alright, go on. Thank you. You know we have been attending the same church for some times now. Yes. And you know how things has been for me, no progress, no achievement, no success, I am poor, unlike you that has everything without struggle. It's all to the glory of God. I want you to help me to become rich too, I am ready to do whatever it takes. If I understand you correctly, you want to know the secret of my riches. Exactly, that's what I want you to tell me. The secret to my riches is God Almighty, He in His infinite mercy has blessed me with all that I have today. I know you and so many others may think I did money rituals, but I did not, it is only God that blesses someone without asking for anything in return, and it is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich without struggle. As for what you can do to become rich and blessed in all ramifications, I will share a few tips in scripture with you, I believe things will start getting better after then. Okay, you can share them with me. First, you must believe that you are rich and not poor, because you have a heavenly father who is rich, everything in heaven and on earth belongs to him, so you can't have a rich God and be poor. Secondly, you should start praying and asking God for whatever you want in total humility, don't form righteous because all our righteousness is like a filthy rag before him. Thirdly, have faith that God will answer all your prayers, and thank him with the belief that you already received all that you requested for. For more blessings, you can pray with this scriptures, Philippians 4.19, Proverbs 10.22, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Take time to pray for a financial breakthrough, citing the promises you've read from God's word. It's good if you can wake up and pray by midnight. Okay. Also learn how to give. The more you give, the more you receive. 
You don't have to give much, just give what you can afford. Do these things with faith and watch how your situation will change for good. Do you honestly mean I don't have to do anything more than these things that you just said? Yes, Francis. All right, thank you. I will leave now. All right, I will give you some money before you leave. Thanks so much. Francis, how was the place you went to? Richard does not want to tell me the truth about how he acquired all his wealth. He thinks he can fool me with Bible verses. He has forgotten that I am also a Christian and I also know how to pray. Please help me write down the Bible verses. I will take it home and pray with them together with my family. All right, I will give you before you leave. If I would advise you, I would say we should do as Richard has directed. It doesn't cost us anything. After all, they are the words of God to us. Thanks, but I don't have that kind of time to waste. He even asked me to wake up at midnight and be praying, the time I'm supposed to be resting after a whole day of hard work. I can't possibly do that, I will continue praying my own way for a financial breakthrough, I'm sure God will remember me one day. As for me, I will make sure we do as he said, I have faith that it would change our situation for good. Best of luck in your trial. Thank you, we would see later. Welcome dear. Thank you. I am coming from Francis's place now, he gave me some Bible verses that we can pray with for financial breakthrough, we would also be praying those prayers at midnight. That's good my dear, midnight prayers are always powerful, I pray God answers our prayers. Amen, so we have to sleep early so that we can wake up later. Alright, my dear. At 12 a.m. midnight, Ezekiel and his wife woke up to pray. This is how we would conduct the prayer, I will read a Bible verse and we would pray with it. Then you would also read a verse and we would also pray with it. All right. Matthew 6 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Thank you, Lord, that because we are seeking you and your kingdom first, all these things shall be added unto us. Amen. Proverbs 10 22, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth, without painful toil for it. You are such a great God. Everything you do is with ease and grace. Thank you for bringing wealth into our lives without the painful struggle that could come with it. Amen. Proverbs 22 4. Humility is the fear of the Lord, and its wages are riches and honor and life. Help us to be and remain humble, Lord. With our humility will come riches, honor and long life. Praise Jesus. Amen. Deuteronomy 29 9. Carefully follow the terms of this covenant, so that you may prosper in everything you do. Help us to follow your commands, wishes and divine will, Lord, so that we may prosper in all that we do. Amen. Matthew 6 26. Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Father God, help us to remember our value and our worth. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you and trust you for all provision. Amen. Philippians 4 19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9 8 And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Amen. Jeremiah 17, 7 8 But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank, with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. Amen. 1 John 5 14-15 This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His divine will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. Lord, as we approach Your throne of grace today, we pray that You would align all our prayers and supplications according to Your divine will. Thank you for hearing us, and for granting our heart's desires. Amen. And Amen. Please subscribe to this channel. I heard Paul is back from overseas. The last time we saw, he was very rich. I hope he tells me the secret of his riches. I am willing to do anything to put an end to poverty in my life. Good day Francis. How are you doing? I'm fine, Paul. I heard you were back, so I decided to come check up on you. How are you doing too? I'm fine by God's grace, how have you been coping all this while? It has not been easy, I have been struggling to survive, I am still as poor as you left me few years ago, in fact, the reason why I came to see you is to ask you the secret of your riches. You were very rich the last time we saw. 
That's true Francis, I was very rich sometimes ago, but the secret is destruction. Destruction, what do you mean? I got my riches from the devil. You mean you did money ritual? Yes, the devil gave me the riches in exchange for my soul. I became an agent to the devil, he used me to destroy many souls, until, I met with Jesus, who restored my soul and made me whole again. I had to give up everything that I got from the devil, so that I can be totally free from his shackles. Ever since then, the Almighty God has been sustaining me, I now have peace within me. You are a product of grace and mercy. Yes, I would advise you to wait on God for your riches, don't allow desperation to make you lose your soul to the devil. Remember the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people, craving money, have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Thanks for your timely advice, I would do as you have said. All right, may God grant all your good heart desires. Amen. Praise the Lord my dear. Hallelujah. God has started his wonders in our lives. Do you remember a huge contract that I have been bidding for since the last few months? Yes, tell me about it. I have just been awarded the contract, the contract is worth a lot of money, and working for that prestigious company will boost my career. I'm so grateful to God. God is indeed a great God, even my business has been going on well these days. Ever since we started praying with the word of God, our lives has taken a new turn. Yes, we have to start giving out to people that doesn't have, that way, God will continue to bless us. You are right dear, let me go and prepare dinner, I will be right back. The next day. God, please answer my prayers, Ezekiel has also become rich, I now beg from him, he too, now does things for the less privilege. We used to starve and complain together, but now his life has become better, they are not better than me Lord, bless me so that I can become richer than both Richard and Ezekiel. I think I also need to pay Ezekiel a visit, I need to know how he was able to become rich in a short period of time. He is my friend, he would tell me the truth about how he ended poverty. Welcome Francis. Thank you Ezekiel, and thanks for the other day. It's nothing. A lot of things has changed in this house, it's now better than I used to know. Not only in the house, a lot has changed in all aspects of our lives. All to the glory of God. But Ezekiel, we are friends, and you didn't carry me along in this journey of getting rich. You know how we used to suffer together before, I want to also become rich, tell me the secrets of your riches. Francis, but you were the one that God used to open my eyes to this blessings. What do you mean? Remember those Bible verses that you wrote for me the other day? Yes, I remember, the ones I got from Richard. Exactly, those were the ones I read with my family, we read them at midnight as you said that day, and we claimed the blessings in those verses with faith. And since then, things has changed for good. After reading those scriptures, I realized that God did not intend for any of his children to be poor, in fact we are richer than the world because our Father in heaven created both the heaven and the earth. All we needed to do was to seek first the kingdom of God, and every other things will be added unto us. So you mean, just changing your method of praying brought this riches to your household? Not only that, but obeying the commandments of God and keying into God promises to us his children. Wow, this is really inspiring, thanks for opening my eyes to these great lessons, I have been looking for riches with the wrong mindset and without understanding. You are welcome, may God continue to bless us all in Jesus name. Amen. My regards to the rest of the family members. Okay, bye for now. Few months later, God blessed Francis in abundance, he became rich and got married. He continues serving God with all he had, he now uses his experience to encourage others who are at the verge of losing hope. Truly, what God cannot do does not exist. My day was terrible, even in my house, the night is as terrible as the day. Why is it that the time I'm about to leave and become my own boss that this task has to come? God, please help me with this contract so that I can leave for good. How has been your day? Fine ma. So, as we were discussing the other day about your son's waywardness, apart from every other thing that I told you we are going to do. The most important aspect is the spiritual work. Okay ma. You see the spiritual work, I have done it with several other people. And I'm very sure that we shall have a testimony about your son too. Amen. Thank you mama. Good day ma. And who are you? I am Raymond's girlfriend ma. I'm sorry I'm meeting you this way, actually, Raymond promised that I was going to see you soon. 
Will you keep that your mouth shut? Now carry your two left legs and leave my house. I'm sorry ma. Sorry for yourself. Don't be angry mama. You see, all the children are the same. Even my son. Hello woman, we are done here. You can leave now. You are welcome. Thank you, MD. Gift. I understand what this phase means for your career, and also what your winning this contract means to your next level in life. So please, do your very best to win the contract for this company. But sir, this is such a huge contract with high competitive companies, I know what losing this contract means to the company. And I can't afford to start my own company as a failure. Gift. I know you can't fail. I mean, you have never failed this company. So go get the contract. Okay sir, I will like to take my leave now. Before you leave, this company promised to give you 30% of the profit from the contract, and also partner with you on the first three contract of your company. Wow, thank you very much sir, I will leave now. Wise one, you are welcome sir, it's good to see you. Thank you, how are you doing? I am fine, but I have told you several times, that you should not be stressing yourself under the sun to come and check on us. You should have just called me if you miss me or you have something for me. You are welcome sir. I actually had something important to do in town, so I decided to say hi. Or is that not okay? It's okay wise one, thank you so much for coming to check up on us. Thank god, how is that your god business that you are doing, or what do you call it? Wise one, it is called ministry. Oh, okay. And with your help, we are doing well. That's good. Thanks for standing by me. You don't need to thank me, you know I have told you to come to the village, more and more people that have lost hope in the god are coming. Really? Yes, by now, you would have made a name for yourself and your son. Wise one, talking about my son, Raymond is about to kill me. What is it again? What has he done? Raymond has a lot of bad behavior. Oh, Raymond is here, how are you my son? Good day sir, I am fine. You haven't paid me a visit in a long while, why is that? I'm sorry sir, I will come pay you a visit soon. That's fine, but make sure you come quickly. Okay sir, I will see you before you leave sir. Okay, take care. So, what offense did you say Raymond committed? He has a lot of bad behavior, just think of any bad behavior and my son will fit in. I have told you what to do about Raymond, just get him married. Then we would be able to manipulate his wife to make him anything we want him to be. Wife you said, wise one, Raymond has never come home with a good lady, he is fond of partying, getting away with prostitutes. I can't entrust the life of my son into the hands of those useless ladies. Boom, you said right but we can still do something. Just get me the picture of the lady that you want him to marry and leave the rest to me. Wise one, thank you so much, thank you for always having my back. It's okay. Let's go to the dinning, I will serve your food now. Alright. Miss Gift, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting, but you should have called me before coming, to avoid this unnecessary delay, you know, I was busy when you came. It's really okay sir, I know you are a very busy man. But we can just go straight to the point. So regarding the proposal that we had submitted earlier, we still haven't gotten a response. You see, I have heard a lot about you and how much you have been able to achieve within a short while. That's really commendable. Wow, you've heard, it's God. Not only God, and grace, but gift. You know how things are run, if you cooperate with me, and allow me to have a good time with you your company would be awarded the contract. Sir, it's like you are mixing things up here, I will drop another copy of the proposal, in case you misplace the previous one, you can go through it sir. I know you are trying to play hard to get, but I can assure you, if you cooperate with me, you will get the contract. I will leave now sir. Please subscribe to this channel. Gift dear, you were telling me about the project manager who is to award the contract. What about him? Rebecca, you won't believe the project manager asked to get intimate with me before submitting our company's proposal. Wow, that's serious. You know, a month ago, I was so excited to get off totally with a good successful and clean record. Common gift, don't think too much about it, just see it as an additional testimony, which can be so hard to get. I don't seem to understand at all, getting really tired.
You don't have to be tired at the verge of success baby girl. You just have to use this as a stepping stone. So cheer up and let's win this. Okay. Alright. Hi Mr. Chris, it's good to see you again. Look who we have here. Hope our proposal has been submitted sir. You still don't get the deal. I understand you perfectly sir, but all you need to do is, go over the proposal, submit it and let us move on with what next to do. Listen, you cannot teach me my job. See, I know exactly how you've been doing it all this while, but if you think for any second, that you can fool me the way you fool others, then you are making a very big mistake. Excuse me sir. Just use the same method you have been using, or am I too ugly or dirty for you? I'm out of here. Gift explained what she's been going through to Mama, her mentor. Is that why your face is like this? I have always told you that what my God cannot do, does not exist. You just have to trust me and all these things will end in praise. Mama, this is so frustrating, I should have left long ago, or rather, reject taking up this task if I had known Mr. Chris would be this tough. Did you let him know that you have a Mama that is tougher? Oh, Gift, meet my son Raymond. Oh, the one from America. Yes. Mama, you should be told me he was around, I would have paid him a kingly visit. He got back just few days ago. Please pardon my manners, my name is Raymond. Raymond, I've heard so much about you. From how you were able to do so well at school, your outstanding performance, you went for your PhD and you were retained. Wow, it's so amazing to finally meet you. Yeah, Erm, thank you. I was on my way out. Gift, I will give you a keg of well-prepared water and some Bible references when you going. Well-prepared water, what is it for? Don't be surprised, they are scriptural, what you will do is to read the Psalms into the water. And anytime you want to bath, you will put a little of the water inside your bathing water and that would be all. You will testify. Okay, thank you so much Ma. You're welcome. My daughter, what about your picture that I asked you to bring along? I'm so sorry mama, I forgot. You know what? You know now we are in the tech age, I'm just going to send you the soft copy from my phone. That's fine as well, went it to my WhatsApp immediately. You know why? Because I am embarking on a spiritual retreat, I need to pray for my sons and daughters in the Lord. Alright, I've done that already. Oh, okay. Gift wasn't cool with what Mama asked her to do, so she told her friend, Rebecca, about it. Oh, really? Good for you. You have something to think about, I am really blank. I have a question for you. Are you used to this? You know, Mama has been my mentor for so long, after I gave my life to Christ, my mom introduced her to me as her personal prophet. And ever since then, she's been the one guiding me. Remember David in the Bible, when he got to the battlefield where Goliath was threatening the Israelites. He presented himself before Saul with his testimony, Saul thought of how to help the small boy, so he gave him his armor. But it was too heavy for David and he was not comfortable with it. Because he was not used to it. My question is that, are you comfortable with this? No. So what are you comfortable with? Fasting, praying with the word of God and joining hands together with you in faith, you know, this is different. Whatever happens now has an impact in the next phase of my life. I can't do what Mr. Chris is saying, it's against my belief and it is against God. What did Mr. Chris say? He thinks I am like those girls that do have their ways with him, can you imagine? He asked that I use the same method that I have been using to get the contract. The guy is not as dumb as I think he is. What do you mean? He asked you to do what we use to do to get our contracts right. Yes. And that's exactly what we will do. Let us pray. Raymond, where are you coming from? Where have you been? Don't I have the freedom of movement in my father's house? And by the way, what was that stunt that you pulled this afternoon with gift? What was all that? I see you still need to be spoon fed. You see that gift, she is a very beautiful, intelligent lady, and on fact, she is very wealthy. She is a goal getter and achieve anything she sets her mind to do. And me? I am your wayward son, isn't it? The one that stole his father's money, ran away from home, got involved in drugs and jailed for five years in America. Is that not, why do you have to say otherwise about me to gift? You have brainwashed the innocent girl, it's better you leave me alone. Why is it so hard for you to embrace a better life? Can't you see that I'm trying everything possible to ensure that you become relevant in life? 
Mum, don't worry about me, you have a lot more to worry about. Worry about that your beautiful apartment that you have been working so hard to get in hell. How dare you speak to me in that manner? I dropped Gift's phone number and address I'm your room, just call her, so that she can help you find a good life. And remember, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, don't bother about who run into it, use that name, and have a relevant life. Gift received a message from her friend Rebecca about her conviction that the contract matter is settled. Rebecca is such a wonderful friend. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus for the victory. Thank you Lord, thank you Father, thank you. Gift went back to the company that is to award the contract. Fortunately for her, she met the son of the company's CEO at the reception. She thought he was the new receptionist. Hello Christy. How are you feeling now sir? Yeah, I'm feeling better. Thanks. Please, I need you to do something for me. I want you to go to my dad's office and pick up a very important document. I'm not still feeling too well. I can't go out there right now. So, I've called Stephen to take you there. But sir, Mr. Chris, the project manager is not around, and Matthew has gone out for lunch. Okay, that makes me the receptionist of the day, right? If you don't mind, sir. All right. Just go, I will wait here for you. Okay, sir. Good day, I'm here to see Mr. Chris. Are you the new receptionist? Because I used to meet a female receptionist before now. Yes, for now. I actually prefer a male receptionist doing justice to the job. Actually, Mr. Chris is not on seat right now. Would you like to drop a message for him? Sorry, I'm guessing you have a cold. Don't you think you need a day or two off to take care of your health? And who takes a day off, few minutes after taking the job of a receptionist? Health is wealth, you know. Mr. Chris, do you want to see him? I'm even tired of seeing this man, I've been submitting the same proposal for the longest of time. I don't know if you can help me submit it to the people at the top. Well, only God is at the top ma, but I will deliver your message. Thank you so much. Gift, having a dream. She could not see the face of the man in her dream. Starting a new business could be hard, you know, from knowing what you really want to do, to structuring short and long-term goals. And then, most importantly, knowing the right people to work with. And then to getting your very first job. Getting your very first job is quite exciting, but it's not an easy path, you seem to know so much about one's businesses. Well, that's because I've been there before, and all I can say is that, you should trust God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He would direct your path. Okay. Gift's phone rang and woke her up from her dream. She received the good news of her company, winning the contract. Gift on a call with her friend, Rebecca. Congratulations dearie, I got your text. I tried calling you earlier, thank you so much girl, I wanted you to be the first person to hear the good news. Oh, that's so sweet of you, I'm so excited right now, indeed, there is nothing too hard for God to do. But wait, did Mr. Chris later submit the proposal? Do I need to make a research on how God did it? That's true, ours is that, he has done it. So where are you, we need to celebrate. I'm actually on my way to mama's place, I called her already. Okay, my regards to mama. All right, later. You see my daughter, I have always told you that there is absolutely nothing my God cannot do. That you shouldn't be scared, I believe you did everything I asked you to do about the water and the Bible references. That is why we are here celebrating. Mama, I brought some items for you ma. Your maid took them from me on my way in. Thank you so much for standing by me. Let's give all thanks to God. Who are we? I'm so glad you got that contract. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, Raymond. Congratulations, Miss Gift. Oh, thank you so much, Raymond. How did you know? You see, since the last time you met, Raymond has always been asking after you, checking up on your welfare. And in fact, when the pressure was getting unbearable, I told him to get your number from me, but he declined. Well, there was no way I could have gotten your number from her. I mean, if you and I are going to be friends, I should be man enough to get it from you. Well, instead of asking Mama and disturbing her about me, you should have asked me. But we are here now. I will get the number now. 
So, maybe lunch or dinner sometime soon. Oh, I have a lot to do. I'm actually trying to build my new company, so I've been really busy. Wow, I would be glad to help, if you don't mind. Wow. So, maybe lunch then. Lunch, that sounds great, okay. Let's have lunch. I will look forward to it. All right. It's good to have you here. Thank you, wise one. I hope you are doing what I told you to be doing on that young lady's picture. I have seen Gift as a perfect woman for my son, and I can't joke with that. You know. That's good, because I have completed work on that picture. All her desire will be for your son. If she is sleeping, she will dream of your son. If she is awake, she will think of him. I have sorted her in a dark room. All her emotions will revolve around Raymond. Okay, wise one, thank you so much. What can I do without you? It's okay, I have done nothing. But there is a warning, and they are two. First, that girl must never know the truth about your god's business or what do you call it? My ministry. Exactly. And secondly, you must keep her very close to you. Okay, wise one, thank you, sir. Say me well to Raymond. Okay, sir. Rebecca, this dream won't let me be. What I don't seem to understand about it is that, it's an empty dark corner. A place where I'm the only one who seems to know about it. Yet this man that keeps walking in seems to know so much about me. And his words really command success. And I can't get to see him. How can you get to see him when you are in a dark corner? And come to think about it, it is a place where you feel only you knows about. And this man is always there with the details of your life. Then, what is God saying about your marital status, maybe someone is on the way. Maybe a soulmate is somewhere. Talking about soulmate, I think there is a click. Oh, so you've started something behind me. No. Then tell me something. You know Mama's son, Raymond, he seems to like business, I like business too, he loves what I do. And he is also a devoted Christian. I'm beginning to think, probably, he is the man in the dark room in my dream. The corner is your heart, and as dark as it is, you can imagine how perfect a man that you've not asked God about. And someone who hasn't proposed to you. Okay fine, I haven't heard from God yet, but a man that asked me out for dinner, I think he has something to say. Okay, I trust you will do the right thing. Gift, I know you don't really know me, but you know my mom. So trusting someone like me should not be an issue here. And besides, I've been praying to God about the kind of woman I should get married to. And the moment I saw you, I just knew it was you. Wow, I mean, you were right, I actually don't really know you, but I have a God that knows you better than I do. I don't know if you can give me some times to pray about it. Yeah, of course, praying about it is not a bad idea. But you can just get back to Mama, so she can tell you how good I am. Really, are you boasting now? Not at all, all I am saying is, I've come in abundant husband material. It's okay, I will pray about it. Oh, it's Mama that is calling me. Hello Mama. Good afternoon Ma. Good afternoon my daughter, how are you doing today? I've been quite busy of late, I wanted to come see you, but I've been very busy. Oh yes, I understand you're busy. How are you doing, how is work? And I hope all is well. Am as well Ma, I wanted to talk to you about Raymond. Okay, that's why I'm calling you too. You know, Raymond told me about you and I gave him the go-ahead to speak with you. I can't propose for him you know. Yes Ma, I told him that I will pray about it. Yes, that's good, pray about it. But don't be scared to give him a yes. You see, I have known about this for a while, and I can confirm to you that God is involved in this. And it is his perfect plan for you to get married to my son. Raymond. Okay Ma. God bless you my daughter, have a beautiful day. Hope to hear from you soon, and my regards to everyone. Alright Ma. What was that about? Mama wants me to consider his son's proposal. And you, what is God saying? I'm still on it, but I'm kind of confused. And why are you? It is still a very dark corner. Really, God is not an author of confusion. You just need more time in the place of prayer. And it is very important for you to shut out every human assumptions and words, so that you can hear God yourself. Thank you so much my friend. What can I do without you? You can cook without me, so go and cook something for us to eat. You are funny, I will be right back. After Rebecca left that day, Gift had a dream about Raymond. In that dream, 
Gift got engaged to Raymond, and they agreed to go somewhere. But on their way, Raymond took the route to another destination, when Gift made an attempt to stop him. He stopped the car and left her stranded on the road. Immediately, she woke up from the dream. Thank you Jesus for this revelation, thank you so much for the deliverance. Thank you Father, thank you Lord, thank you. So, you dare say it to my face that I don't hear God. That was not what I said Ma, I only said that God has not given me the go ahead to marry your son. Okay, that means, if it is hard for me to hear you that is human clearly, then how can I hear from God? After all I have done for you, the prayer, the fasting, the teaching, and the guiding, you have the guts to reject my son's proposal. And you say it to my face that I don't hear God. I'm so sorry Ma. Gift, get out of my house now. When you are ready to do as God has directed me, then you can come back. You ingrate. Wow, I was lost in my imaginations. Going to Mama is such a bad idea, I've never seen her angry before, and I don't want to see her be. Please God, what do I do? I will call Raymond to meet me at our usual spot. Raymond, you are actually a great guy, and your mother, she is such a wonderful woman. I mean she's guided me since I was a kid, and I really appreciate her. I think I have told her that if I could buy the world for her, I definitely would. Well, she deserves it and I deserve better. You know, the word of God says in Amos 3.3 that, can two work together, except they agree. What do you mean? I know your mother sees me as a great lady, and I know that she seems to want me as her daughter-in-law. But can we now because of this, ruin the plan and purpose of God for our lives? You have to speak in a language that I understand. I have actually been praying about you, and the answer God gave me was that you have to mend your ways. I think it's something you should know better. But the answer to your proposal is no. What? Raymond, so you have been drinking and smoking, what if I was coming with any of my spiritual daughter or even gift? Is this how you will embarrass me? You need to stop using my life as an excuse for your failure. I see you are drunk. So stop spilling rubbish. I am trying for the first time in a long while to see you as my mother, but what is it bringing forth, disaster? Okay, tell me what is expected of a mother that I have not done for you. I will tell you what you have done, so much rubbish. Your gift has said no to my proposal, and I have fallen in love with that girl. No, no, that's not possible. I give you till my next birthday, it's either I have that girl, or you lose me. Raymond, are you threatening me? You didn't tell me you would be coming, hope all is well. Wise one, all is not well. It's about Raymond. What happened to Raymond? He wants to kill himself simply because that girl turned down his marriage proposal. Wise one, you need to do something fast. The girl said no. Yes, she said no. Impossible. Did you do everything the way I instructed you to do it? I did everything wise one, you really need to savage the situation. In that case, you have to go and come back after two days, I will prepare a concoction that you will use. But in the meantime, I will call Raymond and talk to him. Alright, thank you wise one. Dad, my friend is here, she needs you to shed some light on what she's going through. She is so lost in the world of confusion right now. Okay, you are welcome my daughter. Thank you so much sir. So what exactly is God saying to you about this matter, it is very important that you hear God clearly. There may be prophets around you, but it is important that you hear God yourself, because, some of this prophets say things that are in their mind. So you have to tarry in the presence of God, then he will speak to you, and also shine light upon every dark spot in your heart. Because, darkness is the absence of light, so you need to have the light of God to lighten the darkness in your heart. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen, upon you. Verse 2 says, Darkness will cover the whole earth, and gross darkness, the people, but for you, it's different, because the glory has come upon you. If you pray and believe, it will happen to you, and you shall testify in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Gift prayed that night and was able to see the man in the dark room, but the person she saw surprised her. I am tired of this dark corner, let the light of God come upon me. The Bible says I should arise and shine, because the glory of God is risen upon me. I decree, light come, my light has come in Jesus' name. 
Is God really joking? This is someone that works as a receptionist at Chris's office. The man in the dark room was way better than that. He was still the one, just that your heart was crowded. He was sound in business and also in business. Are you now blaming God for lightening your path and heart? No, I can't blame God. If I was able to oppose Mama, then, you know that I believe what God has said, and I know that his plans for me are good. I will stick with that. Our God is faithful, and he will never disappoint us. Good afternoon Ma. Good afternoon, so you are back. I've always been here Ma. Really. But I saw a man here. A man, maybe someone stood in for me when I was not around. Okay. So your GM asked me to be here. Just go straight Ma. The first office to your right is our GM's office. Alright, thank you. Wow. Don't be surprised. Please come and have your seat. Now let me introduce myself to you. My name James. And I am the general manager of Marvin's Investment Company. Wow, and I mistook you for the receptionist. So what were you doing at the counter the other day? You know, it was a pleasure experiencing what Ruth goes through every day at the reception. And thanks for the other day too, for your care and advice. Thank God, thank you also for handling our proposal. Oh, that, I was only doing my job. I was wondering why I didn't get to see the proposal before then. If I had, I would have picked it. Your experience and successes is amazing. Thank you, sir. So, the reason I called, I called your company and your MD told me that you no longer work with them. So I decided to reach out to you just to say, well done. Thank you, sir. I had to leave because I am starring a new company that I needed to work on. Wow, that's great. You know, it's a new and interesting world entirely and it can be frustrating at a time. But those who wait upon the Lord shall keep renewing their strength. Wow, that was so refreshing. Thank you very much, sir. You know, we are no friends, and you can just call me James instead of addressing me with sir. Okay, James, thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. Please subscribe to this channel. Thank you for having me here, James. You don't have to thank me. All I know is that, all is well. I know that all is well, and I'm just really grateful to God for his faithfulness and how he has ordered my steps. Although I am yet to understand why and how he wants us to go about it, but all I know is that, I'm saying yes to God's will. You say yes to God. I don't understand. James, I'm saying yes to your marriage proposal. Oh my God, wow, gift. Do you mean what you just said now? I mean it. Jesus, I'm so happy, you see, gift. We might not know it all, but one thing I know for sure is that, God's ways are always perfect. He is our Emmanuel, he is always with us, you know right? Yes I do. Oh my God, thank you Jesus. Guess what, I have a good news for you. Okay, did you win a new contract? No, I actually just finished seeing James now, and I SAAISD yes to him. Wow, this is great news, I'm so happy for you. That's not all, when I said yes, I just felt like something was brightened, now I feel peace within. That is God, but, I think you need to get things cleared with Raymond and Mama. Or what do you think? Sure, I will. In fact, I will go there right away. Thank you so much for all the goodies my daughter. I'm so grateful, thank you. You deserve it and much more. May God bless you abundantly, and you shall never know lack. Amen. Mama, I'm here with some good news for you. Good news. I'm all here's. Tell me something. Okay, I'm engaged to married. Glory to God. Wow. You these children. You didn't even bother to tell me anything. Even Raymond. He didn't bother to tell me. He did not brief me about all this. But I'm so glad to have you. Thanks you Mama. I will bring him to see you soon. I'm confused here. Bring him to see me. Yes, I don't think you know him. His name is James. James, but first thought you had something with Raymond. Oh no, we're just friends. Just friends. Anyways, I'm happy for you. Congratulations. This is mysterious. This has never happened before. And you were sure the girl ate the concoction? Yes wise one, she did. Then she suddenly showed up to share the news of her getting married with me. Mama, will you listen to me? 
Yes, wise one. Why don't you look for another lady for Raymond to marry? Let's just leave this girl alone. Or what do you think him? Wise one, you see that lady. She is a very decent lady, I've so checked her glory, I see brightness all over her, she is endowed with so much goodness. And with her level of seriousness, I know she can help my son get a future. Save me wise one, do something about this issue, I know you can do it. Okay, that means means, we have to take her case to a deeper level. Exactly. Will Raymond agree to follow you here? That's a minor case, he will definitely follow me, after all, he knows about everything I'm doing, and moreover, he is deeply in love with the girl. Then it is settled, we shall do something about it. Thank you wise one. You will have to come back in a few days, I have to arrange some things. When you are coming, come along with Raymond and the girl's picture. Also, prepare to spend the night at the shrine. We will do as you have instructed, thank you wise one. Mum, how was the place you went to? What did the wise one say? He said we should come tomorrow, that every preparation would have been concluded. Good, I can't wait to deal with that girl called Gift. She will end up being mine. Exactly, after tomorrow, she will not only end up being your wife and the mother of your children, she will end up as your slave. The next day, about the same time the ritual was going on, James started feeling restless about Gift, so he divided to pray for her. The ritual backfired and the wise one died at the spot. Mama and her son, Raymond were rushed to the hospital where they eventually confessed to Gift and seeked her forgiveness. James and Gift got married and lived happily ever after. Thanks for watching, drop your comments in the comment section. Please subscribe to this channel, like share and don't forget to turn on the notification bell.